Hello, and welcome to Programming Like It's 1979. Today, we're going to be taking a look at another programming game that I just found out about called Alan's Automaton Workshop. The premise of this, apparently, I have not yet played it, is that you are uh, assisting Alan Turing in making these sort of cyberpunk clockwork type machines that use finite state automata. Essentially, you're, you're using Turing machines to solve problems. And this sounds, of course, right up our alley here at Tea Leaves. So we have a fairly long cinematic describing how you're going to meet the alleged Alan Turing. You are brought into an apartment uh, where things kind of go very sideways. I'm going to skip this cinematic and show you what I mean. So if you don't know anything about Alan Turing, he was a British mathematician and uh, widely considered to be one of the first computer scientists to the point where we still refer to almost any machine, any computing machine nowadays as Turing equivalent or as a Turing machine itself. So right off the bat, this is Alan Turing. You have a brief introduction to him. He's quite buff in the game, which is kind of an interesting flex. And this is his semi, I don't know, sexy robot assistant. So I, I don't know how I feel about this. Um, Alan Turing was kind of a famously, um, I don't want to say antisocial, because certainly I don't know that about him, but he was an awkward type, I think I could say. So, let's see. This is Shirako. Okay, I'm going to talk to the robot assistant and be very disturbed. General Responsive Automatic Computing Engine. All right, this seems to be plot stuff, which I'm frankly not that interested in. Let's go and actually jump into the game. So I believe this is the first set of puzzles in the game. Shirako the Watchbird. Okay, part one, switch assembly. Hourly chimes. Okay. That sounds very nice. I'd love to hear some beautiful chimes. Please select a save file and press start to begin. Can I just do that one? Looks like I can. I really do like the aesthetic, apart from the robot assistant. I really do like the kind of Baroque steampunk, steampunk look they've gone for. Uh, it's actually what drew me in to giving the game a go. Automaton Design Toolbox. We have devices. I guess these are, we have two devices right now for input and output. And a diagram that transform the input on devices into output based on the diagram. Turn on clutch switches, C alarm and C bell. I'm going to assume that's control. Create a transition to connect two nodes in the diagram. Start the automaton and make sure its designs functions well. Its design functions well. All right, so connect a little typo there. Let's uh, make a transition. Hold the right mouse button. Now that drags the diagram. I see. Okay, we're gonna, I see. So as I move the mouse around, the arrow moves, and I'm going to drag it there. And we're gonna run a test here. Execute all actions in the node. So this is our, essentially, it looks like our programming canvas. Looks like we're sending turn on messages to alarm and bell. If we reach the end, we stop. Fancy. Great. So that's our tutorial level. Mogi's process chart. 
Oh, your character's name, by the way, is John Newman with two N's, which is clearly a call out to John von Neumann, the kind of designer of the modern von Neumann computer architecture. I apologize if you hear my mouse clicks or my typing, but that's how it's going to be. I like me a clicky mouse. And I like me a clicky keyboard. We have a manual up here. That's nice. Covering, adding state nodes. All right. Place a state node here. Where do we place state nodes? New nodes. There's a tutorial. Can I do it without the tutorial? New state node. Drag this button to the diagram. Okay, great. Can I drag up the edit panel? Okay, I would like to, but you've got your video in my way. I see, I have to grab it here. The button is not what you press. Fine, I've dragged it up. You're gonna make me bring it all the way up there? Okay. This is the edit panel, which we'll use to add new actions in nodes. Or we can double click it. Okay. Place it somewhere handy. How about right here? So we're going to go here and sequence E, C, D, G. We've already got E here. So I got to hit plus to create a new action. Bells. There's only one action with the bells, which is hit. And we want to hit C. So this is a bit, um, even though it's finite state automata, they've kind of set this up as if it's object-oriented programming of a sorts. Okay. Let's drag that. Do I need to do this? I think I do. ECD. So then this is going to get very old very fast, picking from these menus. I don't like that. But I understand why they did it. Because if you imagine making this game, um, if you're Zaktronics, <laughs> right, you provide a, an editing window and you just have people type the various commands. You have your players type the commands because the type of player who buys this game is probably not afraid of that. But in doing that, that's actually, that makes it a lot harder to kind of design the UI and handle all the cases. All right, well, I think we have this written correctly now. Let's give it a go. Great, all the test cases passed. We can keep editing if we want to be more efficient. We do not. We can get some more. Chime selector. All right, let's move on to the next puzzle. I say puzzle, it's not that much of a puzzle yet, but this is only the first level. So I do want to, I, I think one of the other things apart from UI, which is obviously, I think, challenging for any anyone making a game, when you're doing a puzzle like this, a puzzle game or a, a programming game, something that requires engagement, calibrating the difficulty has got to be really, really hard. Um, the Zectronics games are good examples. There, there are some of those that have kind of nailed it, and then there are some that, that are, I, I think of Space Chem, which was a fantastic game, but rapidly got so difficult that I felt like it was a brain burner. I felt like it was my second job, and that chased me away. So it remains to be seen where this game falls in that 
continuum. Okay, so now we're going to change our output depending on the input. We have test cases. So if RSSLT is B, we do the ECDG. Oh, result. Maybe RSSLT result. And if it's A, well, I'm hovering, but I'm not seeing the answer. All right, so here we have basically the same machine we built before, except we have this condition now. What is the essential value on the device? So let's go ahead and drag a new state node here. Now this is interesting. So here is where move transition. How do we actually copy and paste? I don't particularly need to copy and paste, I don't feel. But it feels like uh, what I actually want is I want to be able to set this condition. There we go. I see. So a new condition. If result is A. And that's that. So I am curious, however, I want to delete this because I want to see what happens if I leave it as default. How are these evaluated? Can you have a specific condition and a default? So I'm deliberately going to leave that in the wrong state. And let's see, let's see what we end up with. And we want GDEC. Okay, well, there's G, copy, Paste. Oh, that's interesting. It actually selects it when it's pasted, which is very nice. So let's paste it again. And you can't see it because it's actually behind this little panel. We get E, which is going to go here. We have a little error warning telling us that uh, this it's not part of the state diagram yet. And then the last one is C. Okay, and then I'm going to wire these up as defaults. Okay, let's see what happens. So this might fail, but we'll learn something in watching the failure. And that looks like it did fail. Huh, I, I must have misread. I see, so it ran the first test first, even though I had the second one selected. Okay, well, and now we know that you can, in fact, treat that default as an else clause, not as it's going to run it no matter what, which is great. new levels, new dialogue. That's a really unfortunate robot. Uh, it's just, I get what they're trying to do, but you, you're just, you're just driving people away from the game with it. There's, there's a whole set of the audience that might have been interested in this game. 
that is going to take one look at the sort of ridiculous fembot and they're just going to nope out. Um, you know, I mean, even there, there's a way to do something like this that is not embarrassing. And, and so far, so far the game seems fine, but boy, that's a misstep. I hope they don't double down on that later on. If, if this is, if this was the one misstep and that's it, you know, that's the type of thing I can, I can overlook. I can deal with if, uh, if we're, if I'm in for hours more of fembots or worse, then that would make me stop playing. The game is uh, $15 at the moment on Steam, and it runs on Windows, Linux, and Mac. Okay. All right, bird. Let's look at your bird brain, your bird robot brain. Ooh, a debugger. I'll turn that on. Tells us about the expected and actual states of the devices. Perform different actions based on the value of the pressure pad. If weight is equal to seven, turn on warning. If weight is greater than seven, turn on hit. Otherwise, turn on RST. I don't know if that's rest or reset. Okay, well, let's start. Oh, and here's, <laughs> here's our default parameter, just like we wanted. Okay. So it looks like from that, it looks like our maximum weight, the maximum input is nine. Do I have any explanation of this? What this register is? Certainly the test cases only go up to nine. So we'll treat it that way. Okay, well, we can handle the default case right away, which is going to be, I keep wanting to type, reset, turn on. Okay, that's done, except for that. Then, if weight is equal to, <laughs> Oops, if weight is equal to seven, add a new condition, weight seven. This is interesting. So there's no, at this point, no concept of greater than, less than, equal to. Uh, it's literally you're providing a set and the value is either in the set or not in the set. Okay. So if that's on, we want to turn on Warning. And lastly, go here. Wait, a set of eight and nine, and that turns on it. I keep up, uh, I'm double clicking in here to edit it, and it brings the panel over, which is okay. I mean, it's not terrible it's a little unexpected let's see what happens our test cases are running there's our warning recorder. It's pretty good technology for 1938 in the steampunk world. Ah, the or used between transitions is like a union in set theory. We're going to talk about sum and product types, maybe. And 
now here we go product types and security level selector if the following conditions are met mark t record with x if security level equals one and weight is greater than seven or security level is two and weight is greater than five if none of these conditions are met mark our paper tape t it must be tape recording tape with dash okay well once again i'm a big believer in doing the default the default case first so we're going to record we're going to mark it with dash yeah there we go so that's fine and that's our default and we can do will it move no it won't i have to manually drag it some of the griping i saw on the forums was largely about the interface the editor and you can kind of understand why okay if security level is one and weight is greater than seven so that means eight and nine then mark it with an x a lot of clicking here yeah i see why people were bothered by it i I don't know. I, I don't hate it, and I understand why they did it, as I said before. I do wonder how I'm going to feel about this when we get to some of the more complicated machines. I mean, this is going to be a lot of clicking to create that. So security level is 2, and the weight is greater than 5 this time. And in that case, we mark with an X on the tape. All right, I think that's it. Let's run it. Watch the tests. Looks like we could step through the tests. We can also speed them up, which is nice, especially for a video. So it looks like they're doing exhaustive testing here every case which is always good not always good but it's good in this case i think there's our x's let's speed it up a little more great no leaderboard that i can see might come in later Isn't Grace's sexual appeal a bit too much? Well, at least they're wrestling with it. Okay, poor choice of words on my part. I apologize. Grace's sexual allure is unnecessary. I agree, John von Neumann stand-in. So we've added a second pressure pad, I guess. Welcome and come again. Hmm. Breakpoints, sweet. The customer enters the workshop. Front is on and rear is off, play EC. If a customer leaves the workshop, meaning front is off and rear is on, play C, E, otherwise do nothing. Okay. So I don't think I need... Do I need a default case? 
Yes, because we could have both of these pads on or both of these pads off. So we do need a default. In default, I'm just going to leave blank. And then we need, we have two different paths here, right? We'll do the first case first is CF is on. CR is off. This is, it's always very hard in a tutorial level of a game to know what's the difficulty going to be the, of the game down the road. So I would complain about this. Part of me wants to complain and say, oh, this is, this isn't a challenge at all. This is all just completely obvious. But this is still, we're still in the phase where you're introducing the UI to the player. And so it's within, I think, it's legit to not want to overwhelm the player in the first couple levels with your real, uh, your really difficult challenges. So I, I think we're going to have to actually get play this for a while to actually decide. Oh, and I can copy this now. Copy, except that's in my way. Copy, paste, All right? And then I can do the same thing here. Copy, paste. Okay, so that makes it a little more bearable. And then I've got to make some default transitions. I think that's right. Let's see what happens. Great. Uh-oh, we have new dialogue. I'm almost afraid to click. Grant Bridge, I think it's a thinly disguised Cambridge. They use the brilliant genius robot for housekeeping. Great. <sighs> oh, gamers. So we're making an automatic transmission. Well, what's involved in that? Lo I do love those transitions. Unapologetically, I think those transitions into the machines are just beautiful. And, and unreservedly, whoever did the graphic design for this game, fantastic job. Perform actions based on the status of clutches, warning, and hit. If they're both off, power is one. If either is off, power is two. If they're both on, power is three. Okay. Oh, what are these statistics? Are those? No, it doesn't. I was hoping it told me how my friends did. All right, so let's take a look. Move this over, make a little more space. We can do this by making this our default, which should handle this second case, which I believe it said two. Right. And then this can be our both off. This can be our both on. Lots of clicking. Uh, 
I said this was going to be both on, right? I think I did. All right, and then the states are, if it's off, we set that to one. And if it's on, we set it to, th if they're both on, we set it to three. And let's test it out. I enjoy these animations. That's why I'm not speeding them up, because I quite like them. They really break the score down here. I've, I have not been paying attention to it at all, in part because I think we're still at the phase where this is all obvious, but it does promise that these puzzles are going to get more complex as we move on. A low salary. Just what I look for in a technical job. All right, you might ask why am I playing this game instead of Elden Ring? And the answer is that Godric the Grafted wiped the floor with me 20 times last night and I needed a break. So now I'm playing an easy programming game. Go figure. Talking about the spring box, okay. I think this is the last puzzle I'm going to do in this video. Ooh, that's that's creepy. Uh, the last puzzle I'm going to do in this video, I will call it after this, and I will probably continue to play the game for a bit, although not on uh, not for broadcast. And if uh, if it opens up and it turns out to be fantastic, um, I will come back and walk this back. I, I feel. As of right now, having finished or nearly finished the tutorial levels, I don't know that I could unreservedly recommend this one. It is beautiful. It has some things that I quite like, but the level of abstraction just at this point seems not quite what I'm looking for personally in a game. Let's see. Design an automaton that can make a heartbeat a different number of times based on the selected gear. All right. And we should probably, let's look, if it's zero, beat, 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 beat. That's strange. Oh, I see, it's test case three, but power is zero. Right, so it looks like Beat where the beat is always the same number of times as the power. All right, so we should be able to do that. Can we do that without any default cases? I'm not sure. So, one way to do this. I can think of two ways to do this. I'm going to call them vertical and horizontal. The vertical way to do this would be set a bunch of and conditions here where if it's zero, do nothing. If it's one, beat once, and then a different one here and a different one here, right? That would be one way to do it. If we had arithmetic, which I don't think has been introduced yet, let's make sure action. Yeah, we don't have any arithmetic. The, arith the arithmetic way to do this would be essentially recursive, beat and subtract one from power. But uh, we don't seem to have registers or memory uh, at this phase of the game. So, so we can't... That's heart beat. Yeah, I don't think there's any way to, any other way to do this based on the tools they've given us so far. Oh, actually, no, there is a, there is a clever way, somewhat clever way to do this. 
It's not that clever. It's a little clever. And this starts to look a little more like the Turing machine state diagrams I, I was familiar with as an undergrad. So it's not letting me add multiple actions here. So that's fine. So what we're going to do is we're just going to make these different states, but they're all going to funnel to the same place. So this is if we have two, right? And this one, I should have copied and pasted this, but I, I didn't think about it until it was too late. This one is going to be, yeah, that's correct. And then, so I have another conditional question, which is what happens when there is no state? There is no default state. I want to see what happens. I imagine it has to break. Yep, it breaks. Well, why would it accept? Oh, because it's the final test that. All right, we did not need the default state. So if there's no, if no test is true, then it just stays in that node. And they did in fact tell us that early on in the game. cutscene. Well, Alan's Automaton Workshop is interesting. Like I said, I'm not ready to abandon it. Um, but I think this is enough of a taste that at this point, you probably know whether this is your whether this is your jam or not. So thank you for joining me on this brief Let's Play. This has been Programming Like It's 1979. Thanks for watching.